Welcome back. We're talking about symbol codes. And in the previous video, we wrote down these three desirable properties of a symbol code. We said we'd like it to be efficient in terms of getting good compression. But we'd also like it to be fast so that we can encode and decode very quickly. And we'd also like it to be simple so that we can understand it very easily and also implement it easily in an algorithm. And to start getting a handle on B and C to understand what properties of a symbol code might give us good speed and simplicity, we started playing with these, these just very simple examples, A and B, of two little symbol codes where the source, uh, the source alphabet was just this little set A, B, C, and D. And we, we decoded these two, just these two special cases of, of possible strings that we might have to decode. And we found that A was significantly easier to decode than B. And I said that that was because A has this special property called the prefix property. So what is the prefix property? Well, what we started, so let's think about what, what, made, A, what made A easy to decode. Well, when we started, maybe we'll start out here. Think about when we were at this point in the decoding process. We had decoded up to A, C, A, D, and then we were looking at one here. So we had a one, and then we said, okay, the next code word has to start with one, so therefore it, it can't be A. And then we have a, a zero, so we have one zero. So it, let's see, it could be B, but it can't be C or D. So we can cross those off, and then we know that it must have been B. So as soon as we got to the end of the code word B, we could just immediately, instantaneously, write down what the correct code word was to decode to. And so that's, uh, that, that, is, that is the property that, is, that made this so nice to decode. Whereas, you know, for example, over here for this one, say when we were at that, this point in the decoding process, we had already decoded D and A, and we wanted to see what was coming next. Well, we look at, we have a zero. Okay, so it could be B or C. We know it's the next one's not A or D. And then we have another zero. So it could be B or C. Those are still candidates. So we don't have the property that as soon as we got to this, the next code word, we know it's gonna be B here. I mean, just from looking ahead, but we don't have the property that we can instantaneously write down B. We have to keep on looking. We have to say, okay, zero, zero. We had to look all the way until we got to this one before we could even say whether this was, um, well, maybe we didn't have to go that far, but we had to at least go a couple more symbols before we could say that with definitively that this was a B. So, you know, what, Proper, what was it about this code that made it fail the, the, the condition that we were able to instantaneously decode? Well, it was because B, there's another code word that starts with the same thing as the code word for B, right? Because C starts 0, 0, and that is exactly the code word B. So even though we have read through you know zero zero, it might still be that there's that it, we're we're just at the beginning of another code word. So in other words, we say that that the code word for B here is a prefix of this code word. So let's make that. Let's write down formally what I just said. So terminology prefix a one two say n is, and this is a sequence, this is a string in A star, is a prefix of, let's say, B1 to Bm, if n is less or equal to m, and A1 to n equals B1 to n. So in other words, b1 to bm, this string, starts out looking like a1 to an. It starts out with this string, just like, just like here. So this would have been b1, b2, b3, b4, and this would have been a1, a2. So, so b1, b2, that would be this part, equaled a1, a2. That would be this part. Okay, so that is what we mean when we say prefix. And a prefix code. So now we have the definition. Definition. C is a prefix. Whoa, got a little wild there. Prefix code 
or let me say, put in parentheses, AKA, prefix, there's all kinds of different ways to call these things. Prefix, or sometimes we, people say prefix free, sometimes people say instantaneous, instantaneous, instantaneous code. Those all mean the same thing. If no code word is a prefix of another. If no code word is a prefix of another code word. So C is a prefix code if, if no code word of C is a prefix of another code word of C. So here, let's check. So is A indeed a prefix code according to our definition? Well, we need to check that no code word is a prefix of another. So let's see, is, is that the code word for A is zero? That's certainly not a prefix because no other code word starts with zero. Now, how about one zero? Well, no other code word starts with one zero. So we're good there. One one zero, certainly these are shorter, so they can't start with that. And this one doesn't start with that either. So, and likewise, one one one, of course, none of these start with one one one. So therefore, this code, this code A is indeed a prefix code, whereas B is certainly not because like we were talking about, well here, you know, zero zero is a prefix of zero 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 one. And likewise, one is a prefix of one zero one. So it's doubly non-prefix, we could say. So A is prefix and B is not. And this is our definition of a prefix code. And I claimed earlier in the previous video, I think I said that A is indeed uniquely decodable. And that follows from the fact that is it is a prefix code because any prefix code is uniquely decodable. So this is a note we make, I'll say note any prefix code, or I can just say it this way. Prefix implies uniquely decodable. That is a fact, and I will leave that to you as an exercise to prove. It's not hard to prove. And so therefore, A is indeed uniquely decodable. And you're, you have another exercise, which is to prove that B is, is also uniquely decodable. Okay, so that's so one way to think about this that condition that it, that that we were that made A desirable was this prefix condition. Another way to think about the same thing, the prefix condition, is by thinking about this these codes as as trees. So maybe where can I draw a tree? Let me make a little space here. Let me make some space right here. Cut this out. Let's draw a tree for A here. So how could we represent this as a tree? Well, we could start out, let's say, uh, you know, think about the, the decoding process, right? Maybe if we start out at, at the root of the tree, let me do that in a different color. So we start at the root and then we either get a zero or a one. So like say we, we were here and we got we got a one, So, but we could have gotten a zero. So we had two possibilities. So it was either zero or one. And then if we got a zero, then we know we're at A, so we can just decode to A. Whereas if we got a one, well, we have some more decoding to do. So we, if we get a one, then we have to maybe draw another node here then we might get either another zero or we might get a one. So we have, we can split, we can branch the tree here. If we get zero, we know we're at B. And if we get a one, we have to look one more time. So we split once more, zero, one. And if we get zero, we're at C. And if we get one, we, we decode to D. So we could represent this code as this tree. And in this case, it's it's actually a binary tree because every node has is either a leaf or it has two children. Now, more generally, you might be able to see that any prefix code, for any prefix code, each node will be will have either 
either two children or one child or zero children. If it has zero children, it's just it's just a leaf. Uh, and if it has two, you know, you're splitting at that node, but it could also have one and that that would still be still have that property of being prefix. And what was it about this tree that made it a prefix code? Well, it was because I mean, if you think about just what what it means for one of these code words to be a prefix of another, like so B here was was one zero, right? That was B one zero. If B was a prefix of some other code word, maybe there was, you know, there happened to be some other code word, 101, then, then B would be on the path from the root. This is the root of our tree. B would have been on the path from the root to that other node. Maybe this is, I don't know, E. C of E is this. So E, we would have some 01, and it would be, this would have been E. So B would have been on the path from the root to E. And that it occurs if and only if B is a prefix of E. So, the, so a, a one code word being a prefix of another directly corresponds to that the, the node for that code word being on the path from the root to the other to the node for the other code word. So another way to think about a prefix code is to think about its tree. And the tree for a prefix code has the property that that the path from the root to any of the code word nodes to any of the, the leaves of the tree does not pass pass through any of the other code word nodes. Well, so yeah, the, I should say the, the path from, from the root to any code word node does not pass through the, the, the code word node for any other code word. Okay, hopefully that was clear. I think you, if you play around with this, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see what I mean, if that wasn't completely clear. So this is another nice way to think about prefix codes. And so we claim that any prefix code is, is uniquely decodable. And you might ask yourself, well, is you know the natural thing when you have an implication like this is to say, does the converse hold? Is every uniquely decodable code a prefix code? And well, of course, you know, we already know the answer to that. I because I, I told you here that B was a pre was not prefix. B was uniquely decodable, but obviously it's not prefix. So so the converse does not hold. Okay, so, so, we, so we defined prefix, we thought about the tree representation, and, and this is an important way to think about them later on when we talk about the craft macmillan inequality. Thinking about these, these um, codes in terms of their trees is a very nice way to think about them. And one other thing I'd like to mention here is left prefix versus right prefix. So... Here's another little concept. Left prefix, what I've been talking about so far, you might call a left prefix, the left prefix condition. And you could compare this with right prefix. So left prefix, or I mean, maybe you, maybe it would be better to say postfix. I'm not sure, I, maybe postfix would be a better way than right, right prefix. But by right prefix, I just mean that um, if you were like uh, you know if you were reading the 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 encoded message in reverse so what i mean by a right prefix code is that if you were to read the encoded message in reverse that um, that uh, from the right that no code word is a prefix of another so for example here this would not be a right prefix code because zero would be a right prefix of one zero because because this one and same thing here zero would be a right prefix of this b the code word for b one zero would be a right prefix of this code word because it ends in one zero and uh it's it's pretty easy to see just by analogy with you know the, the proof is exactly the same as proving that a prefix code is unique a left prefix code is unique the exact same proof but just sort of in reverse you know, starting from the right instead of the left, shows that any right prefix code is also uh, uniquely decodable. 
So oftentimes you'll you'll maybe people will throw at you a code and say, is this uniquely decodable? And you look and you say, oh, it's not prefix. Oh my goodness, how, you know, how, this might be difficult to determine. But if you can see that it's right prefix, that's a frequent trick that people use. If it's right prefix, then you can just very easily say, aha, yes, I know that it is uniquely decodable. Okay, so that's that's prefix codes. And next, we're going to start talking about uh, the Kraft Macmillan inequality. So, the Kraft Macmillan inequality will be our first theorem. It's quite a s surprising little result, and, and it'll be very useful for us. Okay, so see you soon.